All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm sorry we're getting started a little bit late. I was having some technical difficulties with my microphone, but I've got those resolved now, and hopefully everybody can hear me. Uh, before we get started, just a few housekeeping tips. Um, if you do have a question or um, some sort of issue that you have that you need some help with, there is a chat box down in the bottom left-hand corner, and you can send that over to me. And um, I will answer your questions at the end of the uh, presentation. Um, if there's a problem, I will try to answer that um, or send you something to get that fixed. So hopefully you all can hear me. But um, it's three past now, so we'll go ahead and get started. So thank you all for joining us today as we take you on a virtual tour through Norway on three of Brecky's Scandinavian tours scheduled for 2017. My name is Amanda Hancock, and on behalf of Brecky Tours, I invite you to join us this summer and fall as we travel to our favorite corner of the world, Scandinavia. Now, in case you are new to Brecky Tours or don't know that much about us, I want to give you a brief introduction into who we are. Brecky Tours was founded in 1956 when Arne Brecky, a student from Norway, worked his way through graduate school in America by conducting summer tours in Europe. We are a family-owned company located in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and we offer a wide variety of products and services such as our own escorted tours, independent travel packages, customized tours for individuals, families, and groups, heritage travel, and cruises. Now our goal here is pretty simple, is to strengthen the cultural and ethnic ties between North America and Scandinavia by creating meaningful travel experiences. So why do people want to visit Scandinavia? Well, there are many reasons, but I summed them up, uh, just a few of them here. So first off is the natural beauty and phenomena. So there's glaciers, fjords, mountains, forests, the midnight sun, and the northern lights, which can all be found in Scandinavia. Scandinavia also has a really rich history filled with Vikings, kings and queens, wars, great wealth, hardships, and so much more. It's, the culture of Scandinavia is really it's unique for each country, and yet at the same time, they're intertwined. Nature, family, education, and hard work are all highly, highly valued by the folks living in Scandinavia. And most Scandinavians speak very good English, so making it an easy place to get around on your own. Speaking of which, the public transportation system in Scandinavia is very good with buses, trains, and low-cost airfare to choose from, it's easy to get from point A to point B. Now the food, fresh seafood, freshly baked bread, fresh fruit. I don't know if you noticed the theme there, but everything is fresh and it's so good, and it's all found throughout Scandinavia. And finally, Scandinavia is a relatively safe destination. In fact, you may see babies sleeping in their strollers outside of shops and restaurants. So who will you be traveling with on a brekkie tour? So you'll meet a variety of people, but in general, these folks are from the U.S. and Canada. They'll have ethnic ties to Scandinavia. They're retired, and they enjoy learning new things and seeking out new experiences. Some other interests that you might find uh, are they enjoy history, embroidery, folk music, dancing and singing, hiking, and other outdoor activities. So now that you know a little bit more about Becky Tours and your fellow passengers, let's pack our virtual bags and head to Scandinavia. So first off, we'll start with Taste of Sweden and Norway. Now departing on June 22nd, this is a 10-day tour that offers a sample of both countries in one tour. So you'll start in Stockholm, where you'll spend three nights in Sweden before crossing the border into Norway. You'll travel through Oslo, Flum, and Bergen in five days. On day three, I'm sorry, on day one, you'll depart the U.S. on your flight to Sweden. You'll arrive on day two where your guide will meet you at the airport and escort you to your hotel where the rest of your day is free. On day three, we'll start off with a city tour featuring Stockholm City Hall. You'll learn more about one of Sweden's most famous buildings and one of the capital's most visited tourist attractions 
It is famous for its grand ceremonial hall, such as the Golden Room, aptly named, because it is completely covered in um, gold, and unique pieces of art. It's also the venue of the Nobel, Nobel Prize Banquet each year on December the 10th. We'll also visit the Vasa Ship Museum. This is home to the world's only preserved 17th century warship, and it offers a look into the ship's construction, thinking, and resurrection. Your afternoon is free to explore Stockholm's Old Town, where you may want to take part in the Swedish tradition of fika, or an afternoon coffee break. It's often served with pastries and sandwiches, and it offers one a chance to slow down and appreciate the good things in life. Now on day four, we'll depart Stockholm and drive to Dalarna. This is a popular vacation destination for people living in southern Sweden, and the Dalarna region is known for its good fishing and deep forest. In Uppsala, we'll tour the famous cathedral. Now the cathedral dates back to the late 13th century, and at a height of 389 feet, it is the tallest church in the Nordic countries. We'll continue on to Sundborn, which is the home of Carl Larsson, one of Sweden's most beloved artists. He considered his finest work to be the Midwinter Sacrifice, which is a large painting now displayed inside the Swedish National Museum of Fine Arts. Your hotel for tonight is the lovely quality spa and resort of Kalia in Tallberg. Now it's perched up high with fantastic views over Lake Silden, and the hotel offers its guests a chance to relax and unwind in a peaceful setting. The next morning, you'll get to see where the Dala horses are made with a visit to the Dala Horse Factory in Nusna. People have been carving wooden horses as toys and decorative items for hundreds of years, but it was in the early 1800s that the Dala horse began to take its classic shape with bright colors and painted flowers. In 1928, the Olsen brothers took out a loan to buy a saw and opened a small factory to make Dala horses. The risk paid off, and the descendants of the Olsen brothers are still making Dala horses in Nusna nearly a century later. After the tour, we'll continue to Oslo, driving through the Varmland province en route. Tonight, you'll stay in the heart of Oslo at the Grand Hotel. On day six, we'll begin with a tour of Oslo featuring Vigeland Sculpture Park and the Viking Ship Museum. Vigeland Park is the world's largest sculpture park made by a single artist and is really, it really is a must-see while you're in Oslo. The Viking Ship is home to the world's best preserved Viking ships and finds from Viking tombs around Oslo fjords. In addition to three Viking ships, you'll also find a number of small boats, sledges, a beautiful cart, tools, textiles, and household utensils. The rest of your day is free in Oslo to explore on your own. On day seven, we'll leave Oslo behind and drive through the Valdres Valley to Borgen Stave Church. This church was built around 1180 and is dedicated to the Apostle Andrew. The church is an exceptionally well-preserved and is one of the most distinctive state churches in Norway. Some of the finest features are lavishly carved portals and the roof carvings of dragon heads. We'll then drive the snow road to Stegestein for a chance to float above the fjord and the village below. The platform juts out from the mountain at over 2,000 feet above the fjord and it's made from laminated wood and steel. We'll then travel down the mountainside of Flum, located at the end of Ireland's fjord, which is that way. I don't know if you guys can see my arrow, but it's off to the left over there for an overnight at the Fresheim Hotel. The next morning, you'll want to definitely have your camera ready because you're going to set off on a, the Norway in a nutshell experience. So first, you'll start off with a cruise of the Ireland Fjord and Narrow Fjord. Then we will take a ride on the famous Flum Railway, which is ranked as one of the top 20 train rides in Europe. Within 13 miles, you'll ascend from sea level to 2,800 feet above. In Myrdal, you'll change to the Oslo Bergen Railway and continue to bus where, you'll, where you will meet your bus and drive to Bergen. Now, hopefully when you get to Bergen, it looks like this. 
and not like us. So on average, there are 231 days of precipitation in Bergen each year. Thus, you may want to bring your umbrella. But just remember, as Norwegians say, there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. On your final day in Norway, you'll spend, um, you'll spend it on a city tour, first to Trollhagen, which was the home of Norway's famous composer, Edvard Grieg. You'll learn more about his family and music as you tour his family home of 22 years. Next, you'll walk through the historic Hanseatic Wharf and hear the stories of the people that used to live and work and the wooden buildings lining the street. Your afternoon is free to shop, sample the wares at the fish market, or ride the funicular to the top of Mount Florian for a view of Bergen. So to sum up, for those interested in visiting Sweden and Norway, this is a great tour option as it covers the highlights of both countries, such as Stockholm, Uppsala, Oslo, the Fjord country, and Bergen. Now the price of this tour with airfare from Minneapolis is $42.95 per person. However, that doesn't mean you have to fly from Minneapolis, so if you're looking at flying from a different city, that's something that we can certainly do. All right, are we ready to set off again? This time we're going to Norway, Sweden, and Denmark on a 14-day adventure through the Nordic countries on captivating Scandinavia. We'll depart on July 22nd, and we'll start in Bergen this time, travel through Flum and Oslo before cruising to Copenhagen. For Denmark, we'll cross into Sweden's Kingdom of Crystal, Gothenburg, and finally Stockholm. You will depart Norway uh, for Norway on day one with arrival into Bergen on day two. You'll meet your guide and bus at the airport once again, then travel to the Clarion Admiral Hotel where the rest of your day is free. I would suggest getting outdoors really to kind of reset your body's internal clock to the new time zone. You can visit the fish market, which is just a short walk away from the hotel, uh, explore Hackham's Hall, or simply relax at one of the restaurants near the wharf. It's all great ways to spend the afternoon. And if you need to know how to find your guide, just look for the person at the airport with the brekkie sign. So they'll meet you outside the um, customs hall after you collect your luggage. So on day three, we'll begin with a sightseeing tour of Bergen, featuring once again Trollhagen and the historic Hanseatic Wharf. This was once the main hub for trade between Norway and the continent, and it goes back nearly a thousand years. You will have some free time in the afternoon to explore Bergen independently, or you can relax at your hotel. As you can see, our hotel is going to be right on the water, so it's a, and they have um, some seating out here where you can sit and enjoy a, um, this Norwegian version of Fika. Now on day four, we'll depart Bergen and drive to Bolf, where we'll board the train for the trip on the Flom Railway to Flom. After arriving in Flum, we'll cruise the Ireland and Nary Fjord to Goodbongen before returning to Flum for a night at the Fretheim Hotel. The next day, we'll proceed to Oslo with stops along the way at Stegestein and Borgen State Church. So I included this, this different picture of Stegestein that kind of shows you what the construction is all about. So as you can see, it's got this long platform that really takes you out, um, out of the mountain and for really just a very unique perspective. Now day six begins with a sightseeing tour of Oslo featuring Vigeland Sculpture Park and the Viking Ship Museum, and the rest of your day is free. So during your free time, you may wanna explore Akershus Castle. Dating back to 1299, this medieval castle and royal residence developed into a fortress in 1592 after which it was rebuilt into a Renaissance castle beginning in 1637. It includes several magnificent halls, the castle church, royal mausoleum, models of the castle, the government's reception rooms, and banquet halls. You may also want to visit the nearby Resistance Museum, which documents Norway's domestic World War II history from the years 1940 to 1945. The exhibitions have re recreated five years of occupation through pictures, documents, posters, 
objects, models, original copies of newspapers, and recordings. Other sites worth a visit include the Oslo Parliament Building, the Opera House, National Museum of Art, and Oslo City Hall. You'll have some more time to visit these sites on day seven because you will have most of the day free. In the afternoon, we'll transfer to the pier for an overnight cruise to Copenhagen. You can relax and enjoy dinner on board before letting the ship rock you to sleep in your outside cabin. When you wake up the next morning, we'll be in Copenhagen. After you disembark, we'll tour the city's major sites and learn about Copenhagen's colorful history dating back more than 6,000 years. The first written record regarding Copenhagen dates back to 1043. The reigning monarch, Queen Marguerite, can trace her ancestry back to the Viking Age, which makes Denmark the world's oldest kingdom. The rest of your day is free to um, and, um, explore Stroget, which is the world's longest shopping street, Frederick's Church, Nyhaven, or Emilienburg Palace. Now tonight, you're in for a treat. We will have dinner at the Magic Magical Tivoli Gardens. This is a 19th century amusement park and is really a must see for visitors to the city, both young and old. Now on day nine, we'll depart Copenhagen and drive to Hillerod for a tour of the Frederiksborg Castle. This was built as a royal residence for King Christian IV and now the castle is a museum of national history. A new permanent ex exhibition shows the history of the castle and the museum, including parts of the castle previously closed to the public. Here you can see original sculptures and decorations before the fire um, in 1859. The palace grounds also boasts a beautiful Baroque style garden that was recreated in 1996, according to the original drawings from 1725. Especially worth noting are the royal monograms executed in boxwood, the historical flowers, and the festive cascade. Cascades. So if we have any gardeners out there listening, this would be some place you would probably want to, to see. And I included just a few pictures of inside the castle so you can see um, just really what it's, what it's about. And it's quite grand. Now tonight, you'll rest your head at the lovely Tolstaholm Manor in Logan. For more than 600 years, travelers have found lodging for the night Mills, harmony, and time for thought here. Gustav Vasa, Wilhelm Moorberg, and Bruno Matheson are just a few of the guests who have enjoyed food and hospitality over the years at Tulsa Home. Now the next day, we'll get up and head to Costa Boda in the Kingdom of Crystal, which is a region of Sweden that contains 15 glassworks dating back to the 18th century. The glassworks have become a part of the culture of Sweden, and examples can be found in many Swedish homes, recognizable by a small sticker at the bottom with the name. While we're here, we'll enjoy a Hitsa lunch featuring traditional music and food. It's a good time for everybody. Next, we'll travel to Gothenburg, where we will stay for two nights. We'll learn about the history of this port city on a morning sightseeing cruise through the Dutch and Spire canals on day 11. After the tour, your day is free to visit the Volvo Museum, the Fish Church, or the Gothenburg Museum of Art. Day 12 takes us through the Swedish countryside as we travel from Gothenburg to Stockholm. Along the way, enjoy music, language lessons, and commentary from your guide. We will arrive in Stockholm where the tour will end on day 14. But before we say goodbye, we'll visit the Vasa Ship Museum, City Hall, and other places of interest on a half day sightseeing tour. This is a great tour if you want to experience all three countries at once. Extra experiences include the dinner at Tivoli Gardens, a tour of Fredericksburg Castle, a night in a Swedish manor house, a visit to Costa Boda for a hit lunch. You'll also have free time in Gothenburg to pick and choose what you want to see in this lively town. You'll have a sightseeing tour in Gothenburg before traveling to Stockholm, where we'll enjoy a tour of the city and a visit to the Vasa Ship Museum. 
The tour price for Captivating Scandinavia is $55.95 per person. However, we are currently offering a discount of up to $200 per person if you register by February 10th, which is tomorrow. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a bit. All right, it's our last, last tour of this morning, and it's also our last tour of the season, Scandinavia in September. This tour includes two nights in Stockholm before flying to Oslo for a six-day tour through Norway. On day one, we'll depart the U.S. on the flight to Sweden. We'll arrive on day two, and again, the guide will meet you at the airport and escort you to the hotel, where the rest of your day is free. Now, on day three, we'll start off with a city tour featuring the Vasa Ship Museum, and we're going to change it up this time because we're going to visit Wisconsin. Opened in 1891, Wisconsin is the first open-air museum in Sweden and was designed to show the way of life in different parts of Sweden before the industrial era. 150 farms and dwellings from different parts of the country were disassembled and transported to Stockholm to create the museum. Wisconsin also houses the Stockholm Zoo with animals native to Scandinavia. The following day, we'll, stool, we'll tour Storkirken and Stockholm City Hall. Now, Storkirken is the oldest church in Gamlestan, which is the old town in central Stockholm. Built in 1279, the church houses unique objects such as the St. George and the Dragon sculpture, which was done in 1489, and Lena Lervik sculpture, Joseph and Mary, which was done in 2002. Since 1527, the cathedral has been a Lutheran church. A wide range of religious services and concerts are held here, including the wedding of Crown Princess Victoria and Prince Daniel, which took place back in 2010. In the afternoon, we'll fly to Oslo, where the rest of your day is free to relax or explore on your own. On day five, we'll begin with a tour of Oslo's Opera House. This was opened in 2007 and it really has a very unique shape. The roof of the building angles to the ground level, which creates a large plaza that invites pedestrians to walk up and enjoy a panoramic view of Oslo. Interior surfaces are covered in oak to bring in bring warmth to spaces in contrast to the coolness of the white exterior. The main auditorium is a horseshoe shape and illuminated by an old chandelier containing 5,800 handmade crystals. The tour also includes a visit to Vigeland Park and the Viking Ship Museum. On day six, we'll depart Oslo and drive to Valdres Valley to Fagernes. Along the way, we'll stop at Hodelin Glassworks for a chance to do a little bit of shopping, and you can enjoy a little snack there. Along the way, we'll also tour Valdres Folk Museum. This is Norway's fourth largest outdoor museum. The museum currently contains nearly 100 houses and constructions and around 20,000 items. The museum has the biggest collection of Norwegian folk costumes, or bunad, in Norway, as well as arts and crafts from Valdres. Now, it does serve as a culture, they call it a culture cluster for Valdres, and you might find young people playing traditional music and instruments, such as the hardanger fiddle, and they'll perform local Valdres folk dances. Now, the next day in Rots of Flum, we'll tour the Borgen State Church, the Norwegian Wild Salmon Center. We'll view the Ireland Fjord from up high at Stegasine, and then at water level as we cruise to Goodvangen. Day eight brings us to um, a ride on the Flum Railway, where we'll take a little trip to Wolf, and then we'll reboard the bus for a drive to Ulf, which is just south of Bergen for our a home for the last two nights in Norway. The hotel, Solstrand Hotel and Bad, overlooks the lovely Bjornefjord. Now the next day we'll have an excursion to Bergen where we'll tour Trolltagen and the Hanseatic Wharf. You'll also have some time to explore on your own before returning to Ås for a farewell dinner and overnight. 
Highlights of this tour include visits to Stockholm, Oslo, Slum, and Bergen. We'll tour Wisconsin and Stockholm's Old Town before flying to Oslo for a tour of the city, including the Opera House. You'll have two nights at the Fjordside Solstrand Hotel in Ulf before returning home. The price for this 10-day tour is $42.95, which again includes your airfare from Minneapolis. Now, if you're interested in spending a little bit more time in Scandinavia, simply ask us to arrange a tour extension. We'll work with you to create a customized tour package, or we, can, we already have some uh, pre-made packages that you can choose from. And now we will move into the question and answer portion of the presentation. And I'll start out with some frequently asked questions um, for people that are, are thinking about joining our tours. Uh, first off is, what clothing should I pack? And that's probably our number one question. My, my answer is always to bring clothing that you can wear. Casual clothing is the norm for our escorted tours, and you'll want to bring good walking shoes. You'll probably also want a jacket and perhaps a raincoat. Other things you may want to pack include an umbrella or a poncho, snacks, medication, including over-the-counter medications like aspirin, since that's kind of hard to find sometimes in Scandinavia, sunscreen, and a small day pack where you can store sweaters, a water bottle, and your snacks. Now, do we have to change planes? If you do fly on one of our group blocks from Minneapolis, you will change planes in Iceland. Now, um, really in here, you only need about 30 to 45 minutes for your layover because the connection is pretty quick and easy. Your tour director will meet you upon arrival at your destination airport outside of custom. So whether you're flying into Bergen or to Stockholm or even in Oslo, um, you'll collect your luggage and you'll go through the customs and then your tour guide will meet you outside of um, customs in what's called the arrival hall. Now, additional cost. We do include all of your breakfast and most dinners during your trip. Lunches, however, are usually left up to you. You can expect to spend about $5 to $15 for lunch in Norway, for instance. However, if you eat a large breakfast and bring a snack with you and eat a decent dinner, you'll probably find that you won't be needing lunch very often. Other expenses that you might encounter are usually of a personal nature, such as laundry, um, drinks at dinner, if you want to take any taxes, taxis, and then um, gratuities for the driver and guides. I would recommend bringing a bag of snacks with you on your trip, uh, such as trail mix, energy bars, ships, etc. And also pack an empty water bottle. The tap water in Scandinavia is perfectly safe to drink, and you can save two to three dollars on a bottle of water just by refilling your your own bottle bottle of water each day. On the on the way home, you can use your bag that had your snacks in there to store your souvenirs. Do people in Norway and Scandinavia speak English? And yes. Uh, even if you don't understand a word of Norwegian or Swedish or Danish, you'll find that most people do speak um, English and they speak it very well. When is a good time to travel to Scandinavia? And the short answer is really any time. It really just depends on you. If you prefer smaller crowds, uh, being outdoors, or traveling on a budget, then perhaps the spring or fall would be preferable. But if you enjoy winter activities and want to check seeing the northern lights off of your bucket list, then I would recommend traveling during the winter months. If you plan on traveling with a group or you want to experience Scandinavia at its warmest, then traveling during June through August is your best bet. And do I need a visa? Traveling to Scandinavia only requires a passport. If you do plan to extend your trip with a tour of Russia, you will need a visa, but we can help you in obtaining that before you travel. Now, some of the questions that were sent in on the registration form. First off, physical requirements. How much walking is required? Now, a typical day on an escorted tour will have two to three hours of walking, but it's really it's broken up over the day. At some stops, you may only have a five-minute walk, whereas others, it may be a 10 to 15 minutes. For those with mobility issues, you can always, have, you can always opt out if you choose not to take part. Um, if you do have questions, I would recommend calling our office and speaking to one of our agents, and they can kind of give you a better idea of what, um, what the expectations are. We also had a question about having four people in a room. 
As hotel rooms in Scandinavia are typically smaller than what you'll find here in the U.S., that's not something that we normally recommend. But if you're traveling with children, family rooms can be requested. However, they may be an additional cost depending upon the hotel. So it's something that we can certainly check into. We would just need to know ahead of time. If you do have uh, family members or places of interest that you want to see that are not included on any of our tours or independent packages, we can, you can request a customized itinerary. And we will work with you to create a tailored travel plan based on your preferred travel style, family heritage areas, budget, and interest. And to get started, all you have to do is just give us a call. How many people are on one escorted tour? Now, it can vary. But you can expect 30 or more on some of our more popular tours and about 20 to 25 on some of our more out-of-the-way tours. Um, we do operate only one bus, though, so at the most you would travel with 48 people on board. We don't do two buses, only one bus. If you do have any special dietary requests, we can certainly request um, and pass that information on to the airlines as well as the hotels and the restaurants so that they can prepare your meal ahead of time. So that's not a problem. And when is the best time to book? Well, really sooner rather than later, and mostly because of airfare. The longer you wait, the chances of your airfare are going up, or it increases. Uh, if you're interested in one of our escorter tours, we do have some early booking discounts as well. So if you are interested in saving a little bit of money, I would definitely recommend taking advantage of that. So here is a list of our current discounts and the tours available. So um, before we end, I just want to bring that up and let you guys look at that. And now if there's any other questions, if you have something that you would like to ask, please feel free to type it down into that little box over on the bottom left-hand corner, and I'll try to answer those before we leave today. Don't be shy if you have any questions. I know we did have some more questions on the, the forms that were sent in, and some of them were pretty specific. So I'll probably get with, um, I will email or call you after the call today, just so that I can answer those um, more fully, and, and so that we can um, make sure that you get all of your questions answered. So. Uh, Denny, we, I will have, a, there's a recording of this, so I will send you a link to the recording after the call so that you can see it as many times as you want to. I don't know, I, I just listening to myself, I, I have to go back and listen to these afterward, and I always sound, um, I don't sound like I, I think I sound, so. <laughs> Uh, when is a good time to call to discuss a customized itinerary? Um, anytime between 9 and 5. So that's when our office is open. Um, you will probably speak with Joey. He is um, in charge of our more customized um, itineraries and things like that. So um, depending on what you need, he can help you out. If it's something that um, you just need some general information, then um, again, anybody in our office can help, but um, Joey would probably be the one that would actually um, do the work for you. Uh, and you had asked about renting the retreat house in Norway, and yes, I sure can. I, I have a little um, information packet that I can send to you after the call. That won't be a problem at all. And just in case anybody's wondering what we're talking about, um, we have, um, it's actually Arnie Brecky's sister, she has a house located right outside of Flum, right on the Arlen Fjord, that we rent out um, one level of her home to, to those wanting a little more, I guess, intimate stay in Norway. Um, it's got three bedrooms, and it's got, I think, six beds, and so you can stay there with family and, you know, groups of friends, and you have the whole place to yourself kind of thing. And it's, I mean, you literally walk outside and there's the water. So it's pretty amazing. Are there any other questions? Uh, Kenneth, actually, yes. I was planning on doing some of the tours um, to Norway, maybe the week of the 13th. And I will send out a um, notice about that. 
If you have um, a specific tour in mind that you'd like a little bit more information about, feel free to give us a call and we can, we can answer any questions that you may have. Uh, most of us have been on these tours or at least one of them. So we have a general idea of what, um, what's gonna go on. So um, I've been to Norway many, many times. Um, so we can, uh, we can certainly help you out if you have some specific questions. But yes, I do plan on doing just some of our Norway tours um, later in the month. So, all right. Well, let me just flip on over and there's our contact information. If you do have any questions, I will be sending you guys an email later with a link um, to the presentation and it will have my direct email on there. So please feel free to contact me if you do have any questions. Um, I, am, I am here and more than willing to help you guys out if you just have a general question or if you want to get started planning a trip to Scandinavia. Um, here to help. So. Uh, <laughs> okay, Denny, I'm glad I answered your question before you finish typing. So, all right. Um, yes, so there we go. And before we leave today, just to give you, a, so this is the Fretheim Hotel in Slum where you will be staying at um, on all three of these tours. So just to give you an idea of where you will be in Slum, right on the water. Uh, it's a very, very nice historic hotel. So um, you're steps away from the train station. The train station's over here. And um, you hop on the ferry. Um, unless they move the, oh, there it is right there. There's the little dock right there. So just walk out and hop on that ferry and away you go. So I want to thank you all for joining me this morning. And I will be sending an email a little bit later on, uh, probably today, and with the recording. And so you can listen to my melodious voice once again if you choose to. So. Hope you all have a great afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us once again.